Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, welcome to KLP Double Take for sure. I'm your host, KLP Kennedy Lucas. Welcome back to another exciting episode, video, um, podcast, I'm assuming. Uh, I got to give it up to my wonderful, wonderful cast and crew uh, that, that is here in the studio, you know, I'm super excited to be doing this show again uh, with the new studio, by the way. You know, we've been building up studios and now we finally got a uh, new new studio, a new episode. Um, super, super excited for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy this one uh, again with KLB Double Take when it comes to, you know, our talk shows. You know, we like to uh, be kind of, you know, personal with our, our fan base, you know, with a lot of shows. We don't like to be super, super strict with our show. Um, so welcome to the KLB Double Take. Uh, this is our press reaction panel conference episode, if you will. And I'm super excited about today's episode because I tweeted, I Facebooked, and I everybody knows that I am talking about the PlayStation press conference. Um, very, very excited for that because, you know, this is a, you know, an episode that we're going to be talking about our thoughts about the PlayStation conference. Now, we, we are recording right after the show, uh, the press conference, the showcase went live. And of course, I have my own opinions about the showcase from PlayStation, my initial thoughts from PlayStation, and here are my thoughts. Now, the PlayStation Showcase was highly anticipated with the week. I know a lot of us here at KLP Entertainment, we were very, very, very excited about it. Um, but I am really, really stoked. I'm very, very stoked about, you know, the future of PlayStation. Now, the question I want to ask everybody, and I, I'm assuming I'm asking everybody that's watching our, our video right now, was the PlayStation Showcase enough? And that's the question that I want to ask us. Was the PlayStation Showcase enough for us? Now, we do have to remember, guys, that we are going to be getting a Summer Game Fest in June. That's around the corner. Uh, we are going to be getting pro probably more state of play for this fall. Now, after I was watching the showcase today, by the time you're seeing the episode, it would have been yesterday. Um, my initial first thoughts is they gave us a lot of indie type games that we were expecting to see PlayStation AAA type of games. Now, there was quite a few games that I was not really that interested in, um, short cinematic trailers, and there were some games that I were interested in. Now, the games that I was definitely interested in, one game, it was Phantom Blade, um, I'm forgetting what the symbol is, but Phantom Blade was a game that they showcased. I really liked the the style of that game. I really liked how uh, you know it was fast paced. You're you're this character. You're kind of slinging your sword around, your samurai sword around, and I really got intrigued with the character design and the fighting mechanics of this game. This game seems like it seems it seems like it would have been like a fast paced type video game that's kind of new to us. Right, and I feel like Phantom Blade is giving us a game buffer for when Black Myth Wukong comes out. Now, it kind of it reminded me of Black Myth uh, Wukong. Is a high. That's another uh, game that's getting ready to come out next summer, summer 2024, by Game Science, and it kind of gave us that little oomph there, right? Because I'm always looking for a samurai type of game that is kind of in that play style, but it's a little bit fast paced. And that's something that, of course, Phantom Blade, I saw from the press conference. I, I'm very, very stoked about that uh, game as well. Another game that I am semi-interested in, I played a little bit uh, with the first game. And, of course, they did announce Alan Wake 2. Now, Alan Wake 2, uh, Epic Games was a part of it, right? And I'm very, very excited with anything Epic Games is working on simply because they, they're using the Unreal Engine, right? Very, very excited for us because here at KOP Entertainment, we do use Unreal Engine when it comes to our films. And of course, I'm very, very excited about the MetaHuman Animator. Of course, that's the new software to update where you can animate facial expressions right then on your phone. Super excited about that, by the way. 
But Alan Wake 2 will be in the works from Epic Games and Unreal Engine is going to be epic, no pun intended, because they're changing a lot of things from the formula. Now, if you guys remember Alan Wake number one, it was a spectacular game. I played it. I enjoyed it. It was so much fun to play. But then now you have a studio that's coming in, revamping some things, rechanging some things, and it really got me excited for the quality of Unreal Engine. Uh, I can only imagine that having the characters be animated with Unreal Engine, they probably have a bigger studio and they're able to motion capture to what they need to make this game. I'm super excited to see where this game will traverse. So I can kind of understand why, again, we didn't see Spider-Man, I mean, we didn't see Wolverine, but we're probably going to see Wolverine sooner or later. They're just focusing on Spider-Man uh, 2. So, uh, we did get to see Gran Turismo, the movie, which, okay, I mean, I'm not knocking on a film, right? I would never really knock on a film because uh, I make films, obviously, but okay we kind of already seen it we kind of already know that it's coming it's getting ready to be aired in august that probably wouldn't be a movie that i would go out and go see right in theaters i'm pretty sure hbo max or something uh they're gonna pick that movie up for us to get for us to stream it for free I, it's not a, a theater worthy movie in my opinion it looks good though the cinematography looks good i just won't go out and go see this in theaters because i'm a playstation fan right uh gta 6 that was another game that was funny i laugh on the show because a lot of people really thought that we were going to get gta 6 at playstation showcase no i knew that wasn't going to happen i knew that was in the rumors and it's coming but you got to think gta rockstar games they're going to market the game for both consoles and hey maybe they're gonna market for nintendo switch too who knows i knew that game wasn't gonna come at the showcase i i i when i saw people tweeted about that i said yeah i doubt it i really do um because it's just it's that big of a game that it's super huge that playstation just can't handle that uh, announcement alone i i feel it's gonna be great on playstation 5 don't get me wrong but I knew it wasn't coming for this showcase. Um, the accessories. Uh, back to what I was saying, the, the accessories. The VR games do look good, but the problem with the VR games, or the VR system in general, guys, it's just crazy expensive. You're looking at a $600 headset, and if you order online, you gotta think about the delivery and the taxes that come with those prices when you come to the VR headset, the VR2. So you might be looking at approximately $700 for this headset. And I'm sorry to say this, and Sony, if they're listening, I'm sorry to say this, no one's buying this product because A, you don't have a lot of games for it, and B, it's expensive. We are living in the society where a lot of people some of us can't even afford gas and groceries right now. So it, it says a lot when some people can't afford those kind of essential things, people are not going to want to go out and buy a VR headset with limited games for 700 uh, bucks. Like it's, it's not going to happen. So I think it's kind of a swing and a miss with the VR2. Good concept. It's just, it's crazy expensive and it's not really an investment to a lot of people uh, to want to go out and get this VR headset. Um, I would say... A lot of us gamers, gaming community, we're going to wait until the VR headset goes on sale. Because it will go on sale eventually. Everything goes on sale eventually. When the VR2 goes on sale, and when they develop a lot of games for it, that's when I think it's going to peak and a lot of people are going to pick up uh, the headset and try it out. Um, but for me, as a consumer, I wouldn't spend $700 for a VR headset with limited games. I think that's a waste of money. It's not, it's not really, there's not really an appeal to it, right? Um, another thing, guys, did y'all see Project Q, the Q uh, handheld device that they announced? Okay, let's take a deep breath, guys, and all, all my, my people, my cast and crew in the studio, let's take a deep breath on this. It looks funny, and the concept doesn't make sense so you have this what looked like you can say hey that they switch you know 
they have it to where it's a display and two of the, the, the controllers split in half, right? On a display, you can't do PlayStation Network or PlayStation Plus, rather. You can't stream games like that on this device. And the device requires Wi-Fi. So let me ask y'all, my, my, the audience here in the studio and the fan base watching this episode, do you think that this is worth Now, mind you, this device, you're looking at a $300 device, approximately, right? $300 device, you cannot stream games from PlayStation Store or PlayStation Network or PlayStation Plus, and it needs Wi-Fi, right? Make it make sense. The math ain't mathing with that. So a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers will say it's a great device. So when you got to go to the bathroom and take a dump, you can sit down and play your game right there. But it doesn't justify that price point. It doesn't justify the function of it to where you can pick it up and take it anywhere, right? Things with the Switch is you have some games downloaded or cartilages, however you do it, and you can take that pretty much anywhere you go. Last trip that I've been on, minus New York, the last trip I've been on, I took my Switch with me and I was able to play all the games that I've had downloaded or brought with me and I can take that anywhere I can go. I don't see where if you need the PlayStation internet and you can only play the games that's on your, your console and it needs Wi-Fi for it to work too. So let's say if you take it and you don't have that great of great of a Wi-Fi. Let's say if you're traveling, you're at a hotel, and typically hotel Wi-Fi is not the greatest, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I don't see this being a, a selling point to a lot of people. I know a lot of big YouTubers will play this and try it out. I just don't, again, this is not, it's not justifying. It's not, it's not math and right. I think their accessories department is a little bit lackluster um, that we saw in the showcase. We did see the PlayStation earbuds, which, okay, they might got something there. I'm very interested to see the pricing on these earbuds because it did say in the showcase that, you know, you can connect the earbuds to the console or to the controller and you can use them to play or you can connect to a smartphone. Um, I'm very interested to see the price of that because if it's over the price of the Apple AirPods. Now, I do have my AirPods. They're here in the studio. I use them religiously. I use them every day, right? So Sony has to think about, okay, does this justify, does this justify a substitute when it comes to the Apple AirPods, right? If these PlayStation earbuds are more expensive than the Apple AirPods, people are going to be more inclined to go and say, I'd rather just go and get some AirPods. Now, another thing with me too, I have a, a headset from Turtle Beach that is connected to my PlayStation 5. Um, I don't have the PlayStation 5's exclusive 3D Pulse headsets because I couldn't find them. And I like Turtle Beach myself as a, a personal preference of mine. So it has to justify the price. I think the accessories part of the showcase was lackluster. I think it was, most of their accessories are a little bit overpriced and there's no function to it. Um, and that's one thing I, I really hope Sony and PlayStation, they, they figured that part out is these accessories, the, the headsets, um, the dual edge, the dual edge controller, which did get announced in the showcase, but that controller is a $200 controller and the battery life doesn't last long. Another function that doesn't work for overpriced. The, the uh, earbuds, I'm very interested to see how much these earbuds will cost. It's a lot of cool looking accessories, but there's no function, right? And speaking of what's not function, of course, we did see foam starters, right? Or is it foam starters, T? Foam starters, start starters, foam starters. A blatant ripoff from Splatoon. That was the first game that they showed at the showcase and I laughed in the office. I said, this is Splatoon. They just ripped off Nintendo's Splatoon, but with more of an adult feel of it. And you're dealing with foam instead of ink. So I hope there's no lawsuit with that because they, they really just ripped off Splatoon. They really did. They, they realized how popular Splatoon is from Nintendo. And they said, we're going to make our own version of this, right? We're going to make the characters look more adult. 
We're going to make them squirt out uh, foam and, and, and soap water and bubbles instead of ink. And there's our game. Blatant ripoff, guys. Good job, Sony. And it, this calls us for the main event of the uh, showcase. Um, this was really the only AAA type game minus Final Fantasy 16, which we kind of already got the release date. We kind of already know about this game. Um, I, I don't know if this will be a, a grab or pass for me personally. I, I don't know. I just, it looks good. I'm not going to lie. It looks good. I just prefer, I prefer Final Fantasy 7 and how the remake was. It was the Final Fantasy 7 remake. Oh, amazing. I was kind of hoping we were going to see a little bit from Final Fantasy Rebirth. That would have, that would have hit home for me because that's part two of the Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 7 remake. And we didn't get that, you know, we might get that on, um, summer game fest or state of play later on. I was kind of hoping for Final Fantasy 7 Remake Rebirth. We didn't get that, but we did get kind of the same thing that we already know about. Final Fantasy 16 comes out June 22nd, by the way. Uh, we they, they showed us Street Fighter 6. Again, we already know about it. It comes out tomorrow, actually. Um, we already know about those type of games. So I'm just kind of like, okay, this is good that you're showing us this, but I feel like you're just filling in time, Sony. From the showcase, they're, they're filling in that time because we already know about that. Amongst everything else that is triple A in my eyes, of course, obviously Spider-Man 2. Uh, it is good that we did get Kraven, uh, the hunter. He is going to be one of the um, uh, antagonists that is in this game. Um, in the showcase, we were able to see some gameplay and I want to give you guys my initial thoughts. Um, it looks good. It's hard to justify it from the 60 frames per second, the 4K, the crisp cutscenes that they added because this was streamed from their from the showcase. So it's it's a little bit frames drop a little bit because it's you know it's on YouTube. You're we're watching it live. You know it's different than actually playing it and seeing it with your own retina eye on the PlayStation. So I have no doubts there. The hub interface of each character, it's different. I think that, I hope there's a way that you can make the hub a little bit smaller. I'm not a super fan of it, it's okay. And when I say hub, guys, I meant like your health bar, uh, the, the commands on the left corner, the little bug. That's what I mean when I said the hub uh, interfaces, you know, the, the health bar and all of that jazz. I get they're going for like a black theme because the theme of the, the cover art is, you know, and you got Venom, you know, I kind of, I understand that. Um, not so crazy about it, but I think I can overlook it, right? Because I do like the aspects of, hey, we're switching between the characters right then and there. You got Peter Parker and Miles Morales, both Spider-Mans, right? You're Peter Parker who is in the symbio, uh, symbi symbiotic suit, Venom suit, and you can switch between him to Miles. That's good. I, I like that. I'm rocking with that. The character development looks good. I really, 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 really like it that this game is bigger than the first one, right? Now, in the first game, you're only limited into the city of New York City. But it looks like this game expands from Manhattan. It looks like it can go up to Brooklyn, up to Queens, Harlem, outside of the, the, the main city area of New York. It seems like you can go even further, making the game bigger. That's a good, that's a good thing. That's a very, very, very extremely good thing that Insomniac has done, making the game bigger, making it feel bigger than it, the game itself. I love that. Another plus is I really like how, you know, you're you're in the cutscene, but then you're still controlling your character. You're, there's still action within that cutscene. And that's something that Insomniac Games, they've been doing since Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, where the, the PlayStation 5 system and updates, it's quicker. You can react faster. You're switching between characters faster. As if the, the action never stops. No, they, Insomniac Games, they got something there 
when it comes to that. And I, I applaud them for that. I really do. Um, you've got Lizard. You know, you've got uh, Lizardman's in there. Craven's in there. I can't wait to see all the other characters that are in there. Uh, Genki's in there. Uh, he's controlling the drone or is, is he in the drone? I, I don't know, right? Because it sounds like he was in it. It's like, it sounds like something like... It sounds like he died and like his, his intelligence is in the drone. I don't know. Or he might just be controlling it. We don't know. We don't know the aspects of the game. Um, I'm very, very interested to see how Peter Parker and Miles are going to interact. Because what we saw today, Peter Parker with the symbiotic suit, the, the Venom suit, right? He's different. His demeanor is different. His attitude is different. Everything, his whole character is different. I'm very, very interested to see how they're going to clash because they will clash, right? We it's, it's a no-brainer that they're going to clash in this game. They're going to end up fighting where I feel like the Samiak made it to where you pick the character that you want to fight against. So if you pick Miles in a cutscene or a mission, then you're fighting against Venom Peter Parker, if you will, right? I'm, I'm excited for the story development. Um, yeah, guys, Spider-Man 2, it, it, it looks great right? And I can kind of see why Somniac is putting Wolverine to the back burner for a minute because they've got this big game. This is going to carry us over. One thing I didn't like, we didn't get a release date. We've got fall of 2023, which is a good sign, right? It hasn't, uh, God forbid, God forbid, this game gets delayed a couple months, right? God, God forbid, right? We still have the release date of fall 2023. Now, after seeing that and seeing fall 2023, and I might be wrong, I don't think this game is coming out in September. I think this game is coming out late October, is what I think. Because if you have, and I might be wrong, right? Because they might announce a release date, Summer Game Fest. Or, they're gonna build this game up too, by the way. If not Summer Game Fest, then they're probably gonna give us something as of their state of play. To where they might give us an exclusive state of play that solely talks about Spider-Man 2. They're probably gonna give us, in their state of play, more things that it's in the game, more mechanics, more modes, more character customizations, more stuff, then they're gonna give us a release date. Do I think it's going to be September, as everybody rumored? I don't think so. Again, I might be wrong. I don't see that this is happening in September. I would love it for it to come out in September because you think about it, that's what, five-ish months away? I can wait five months, but I think they're going to build it up, right? Because we got to remember, late September, early October, Spider-Man 2018 came out, and then the Miles Morales game expansion came out, I want to say November-ish, right? So they're probably going to follow that same uh, formula. So I, I look forward to it. I'm very, very excited for it. Um, my, my end result of the showcase... Yes, the showcase could have been better because I think a lot of us gamers, we were ex we were expecting AAA titles. We were expecting uh, more of um, IPs. Ghost of Tsushima, Sly Cooper, maybe something from Jack and Daxter. We didn't get that. I didn't get what they said, spelling bound updates. I thought we were gonna get something from, from Hogwarts, but no, we didn't get that either right? Um, it could have been better. It could have been better uh, for them to say, hey, we're coming out the gate. We're swinging out the gate with all these new, these newer games, current IPs. We didn't quite get all of that. And that's why I say this showcase could have been better because they set the bar here and we're here. Our expectations is here. And I would say they're about, they met us right here-ish, right? We didn't get to see, we didn't see we didn't see a whole lot. And I feel like some of the things they hold back, they hold back on. Maybe. Um, but, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. Again, my final 
uh, results is, you know, I look forward for Spider-Man 2. I look forward for um, the Metal Gear remake that it looks, from, from the cinematic trailer, it looks promising. Um, but it's a lot of things they held back on and, you know, it is what it is. It's over now, and you know we'll have to wait to see what the polls say. We have to see what wait to see what people say on Twitter, and see everybody's reaction to videos on YouTube. So you know, so that's gonna wrap it up here on the KLP Double Take. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel of KLP Entertainment if you're watching this episode on YouTube, and if you're listening on our Heart Radio and Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Audacity Radio, and so much more. Thank you guys so very much. Again, also share it with your, your friends, your colleagues, your families, your loved ones, your dogs, your cats. Share it with everybody so that way you guys don't miss our final reaction video from the PlayStation Showcase. And also, comment below, what was your favorite thing about the Showcase? Or what was the thing you didn't like from the Showcase? Put it in our comment box. We would love to hear from you guys here at KLP Entertainment. Again, that's going to wrap it up. KLP Double Take. I've been your host, KLP Kennedy Lucas. So long, stay safe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.